We hear so much about whether an iPad can replace a laptop, but mostly from the perspective of creatives who rely on graphics heavy software to get their work done. What about those of us in more typical knowledge worker style roles? When both my work and personal laptops broke a week before we went to France for a month, I had no choice but to find out. As a marketer, my day-to-day -day job mostly happens on G Suite. That's Google Sheets, Google Docs, and Google Slides. I was quietly confident that I could just switch to the iOS versions of these apps and get through three weeks working on an iPad with no fuss whatsoever. And at first, I actually loved the experience of working on apps rather than on a browser. It might sound like a subtle difference, but working on web apps, there's no limit to the amount of tabs or tasks that you can have open at any one time. This also means that there are tons of distractions. Working on an iPad, you can only focus on one app at a time, and for tasks like writing a strategy doc, that can really boost your concentration. At least it would do if these apps were at all worth using. The reality is that for every short burst of productivity that the iPad gives you, G Suite will take away with its infuriating user experience. Take slides, for example, as beautiful as present mode may look on your fancy new iPad. Navigation is a nightmare, and the lack of basic support for pencil features like Scribble or even Doodles defeats the whole object of using an iPad in the first place. If you're working alone, Keynote offers a much better experience, but in a real-time collaborative job like mine, that's just not an option. Even a comparatively simple app like Google Docs feels incredibly rigid. You have to switch between view and edit mode all the time and dealing with comments is a real pain. And don't get me started on Google Sheets. The app just isn't fit for purpose beyond checking basic numbers and doing a bit of data entry. I will say that I enjoyed working on the Gmail app. It's still incredibly difficult to do some basic email tasks like adding a hyperlink over text or attaching files conveniently. But at least inbox, chat, rooms and meet are all laid out in a much more user-friendly way than they are on the desktop version of Gmail. After my first few days doing my day job on the iPad, I felt exhausted. It wasn't exactly the reason that we went to France. I deleted the apps and resolved to use them in the desktop version of Safari on my iPad going forward. And that gave me a brand new lease of life. Doing your work in Safari takes all of the heavy lifting away from G Suite and means that you can actually now work in more than one Google Doc at a time. It also dramatically increased the battery life of my iPad, which couldn't make it through the day just using Google's apps. Presumably they're just not optimized for the M1 chip, but come on. <laughs> One app that I did love keeping in my slide over was Google Calendar. Setting up meetings and finding times is not great on the app itself, but just being able to move your thumb over the screen to check what you've got planned for the rest of the day is actually really useful. As much as I love the idea of committing to one app, in a fast paced working environment, you simply can't be heads down all of the time. Multitasking is getting some nice quality of life improvements with the new iPad OS, but for all of the fancy split view features, tabs it seems is still the best way to organize several streams of work on one screen, even on an iPad. If you're finding this video helpful, why not hit the subscribe button down below? I've got plenty more videos to come and your support really means a lot. So that's the app experience, but what about the iPad itself? Well, the screen alone makes reviewing ad creative or flicking through presentations a real joy. I was using the 12.9 inch model and it definitely had enough space for everything I needed to do. When using the iPad as a companion to my computer, I found the Apple Pencil perfect for taking notes or marking up documents on the likes of Notability. But honestly, it can feel a little awkward putting your hand up to the screen every time you want to write something down, especially if you're in the middle of a call. And as much as I love the ambition of Scribble, it doesn't feel responsive or accurate enough to keep up with my train of thought. A keyboard, on the other hand, is essential if you're gonna be doing a lot of typing in your job. I picked up the Magic Keyboard, but there are definitely less expensive options out there. And in fact, my biggest advice would be to pair it with a mouse. The trackpad's fine, but it can feel a little bit shallow if you're used to the haptic feedback of a MacBook. And as someone who's had a few hand injuries over the years, I found it a little bit tiring after a few days of use. Just a quick note on camera placement too, it's definitely not in the right place for video calls and I can't understand why the camera isn't below the pencil charger at the top of the iPad. So can you do your day job on an iPad? Well, yes, but you probably don't want to. This is coming from someone who absolutely loves the iPad Pro. I manage this YouTube channel on it so I know that I can be productive in certain areas, but on a day-to-day -day job, it just wasn't working for me. The question is whether you really have time for all of the iPad's quirks in a busy work environment. And do you want your workflow to be at the mercy of particular app developers that your company relies on? When push comes to shove, I bet you'll get more done watching this next video.